Welcome to Automotive Chronicles, the channel about everything that is self-propelled vehicles and machines. Beautiful. Just Beautiful. Never mind the girl, Charlie. Concentrate on what you're going to tell the reporters about the 61 Chryslers. The boys will be here any minute. What do you mean, never mind the girl? I'm talking about Unibody. Oh, pardon me. Incidentally, Charlie, between you and me, and don't get sore now, I wish you body designers would stop giving people the idea Unibody's the only important thing in the new Chrysler. Don't forget, my chassis engineers put a lot into the new car, too. Oh, I can't blame me for being enthusiastic, Harry. Unibody's the hottest item in the business today. What's your plan for getting the newspaper men excited about it? Look, they drive cars, too. They'll appreciate a good thing when they see it. For instance, take Chrysler's low silhouette. Gives the car a road-hugging appearance. And a low center of gravity. Right. This makes the car hold the road better. And it's safer to handle. There are a lot of other advantages the customer gets in Chrysler that he can't get on any other car in its price class. Come on, let's look at the pictures. They'll show what I mean. The average car with separate body and frame hasn't changed much in years. Sure, the body's styling's changed, but the frame hasn't changed much. In fact, the frame gets in the way of modern car styling. Let me show you. Say you lower the car. Okay, you either lose headroom or make up the lost space some other way. For example, you can make the seats lower. Now you have headroom, but the passengers get tired fast sitting this way. If you want headroom and high seats, then you have to drop the body down and around the frame to get the extra room. This creates a deep floor well with door sills so high and wide that people have trouble getting in and out of the car. I get the point. With unibody, the frame and body are combined. Frame doesn't get in the way. It makes the body roomier and up to twice as strong as the ordinary car using a separate body and frame. To make sure the newsmen get the idea, I'm going to get them inside the car and let them see for themselves how Chrysler's unibody gives them more room. I'll point out how the slim roof posts leave you a wide view of the road. With unibody's extra strength, you can have thin posts. I'll get the biggest reporters to try those extra big Chrysler entrances. Hey, you, Smitty, the guy from the Gazette. He's as big as a boxcar. <laughs> Good idea. And if there's a woman reporter around, I'll get her to try the comfort of our high seats. And get the boys to try out that leg room. Incidentally, Harry, that front seat alone represents a great engineering achievement. I'm talking about the custom position feature. This is the only manual six-way seat in the industry. Gives the driver a custom fit for perfect comfort, plus the usual forward-backward adjustment other cars have. And I'm going to let those reporters see how easy it is to step over Chrysler's extra narrow door sills. The dotted line shows how much wider competitive sills are. It shows how much more footroom rear passengers get, too. Beat me to it. Incidentally, this sill happens to be part of the frame side rail. This underbody view shows what I mean. The dotted line shows where the frame side rail is on other cars. Our side rail is flush with the door, gives passengers extra side protection. Yeah. Because unibody door posts are integrated with the frame, we don't need the unsightly reinforcements you get on competitive four-door hardtops, as the dotted line shows. Here's another example of efficient, modern body design. Notice the slender deck lid line? Yeah. No doubt you're going to tell me it doesn't cut down your trunk space. I'm not going to tell you. I'll show you. Here's a picture the boys took of me inside our huge trunk. Enough room to sleep a good-sized man. Not that we recommend it, of course. And another thing. Unibody will last longer. After all, there's less movement in unibody than on bodies joined together with rubber body mounts and bolts. Less movement means less wear and fewer squeaks and rattles over the long haul. Furthermore, unibody will stay solid a lot longer 
because of what I call our preservation system. It starts with special treatment of the bare metal. I don't care what kind of primers and paints you put on if the metal isn't thoroughly cleaned and rust-proof first. You're going to run into trouble with rust, paint blistering, and chipping. Every Chrysler body gets seven dip and spray treatments. The entire body, inside and outside, is thoroughly cleaned with chemicals, bonderized, and primed. The dipping is extremely important because the fluids are forced into every crevice, like the insides of rocker panels, pockets around the headlights, and taillights. To protect unibody finish from chipping and corroding, we applied two coats of a special primer. This primer forms a tremendous bond with the metal, soaks right into the pores. When you cap this off with two coats of Luster Bond Super Enamel, you've got a finish that's smooth and hard as glass. It resists scratching and fading and won't let dirt and road grime take hold. Don't have to wax, just wash the car. And Unibody's finish is assured lifetime protection against rust. Plenty of quality there, all right. Quality in every single step, Harry. Just see, for example, how we seal joints against leaks. This is Chrysler's expandable sealer. We put it in those hard-to-get-at seams. When the joints are welded or when the body goes through the paint ovens, the heat expands the sealer to twice its original volume. This assures a complete leak-proof seal. We seal out noise, too. This picture shows how Chrysler insulation protects passengers from engine and road noises, makes riding comfortable, cuts down traveling fatigue. So you see, Chrysler for 61 is solid, roomy, comfortable, dry, durable, and quiet. Wow. Okay. So you body boys did a real fine job with Unibody. Now stand aside and let me point out some of the things we did for the driver in the other departments. Here's a real champion. Hot in performance, a miser with fuel. It won the 1960 Mobile Gas Economy Run Championship for the upper medium price class with 20.87 miles per gallon. An engine like that attracts attention. You know how interested people are in economy nowadays. They want power, but they also want economy. Well, they get both in every Chrysler engine. Come here by the screen, let me show you. Here's the new 361 cubic inch Newport engine. Has a two barrel carburetor and operates on regular fuel, which means a savings of up to a dollar per tank full. Now the remarkable thing about this engine is that while it operates on regular fuel, it does not sacrifice performance. You gonna tell them how? Sure. We lowered the compression ratio to nine to one so we can operate on regular fuel. Then we increased the intake valve size to improve engine breathing. Result, snappy acceleration, excellent passing ability with regular fuel, and it'll really ring miles out of a gallon of gas. This is the Windsor engine. Always has been a great performer. And yet for 61, we found ways to get even better performance and economy. Look at these features. There's a new two-barrel carburetor which increases fuel economy where most folks drive in the zero to 60 speed range. A shorter stroke means less piston travel, reduced engine wear. Larger bore and intake valves improve the breathing, snaps up performance. And here's a feature every modern car should have, an alternator. It charges your battery even when you're crawling in the slowest moving traffic. In fact, it gives you up to 10 amps charge while the engine's idling. The modern car has outgrown an ordinary generator for its power needs. Look into your average car today and you see power windows, electric windshield wipers, air conditioning, clock, radio, heater, power seats. They all use electric power. Imagine yourself driving at night. It's hot, raining, and most of these accessories are in use. You come to a light and stop. Here's where a generator stops putting out and the battery takes a beating. The needle on the ammeter shows discharge. All your accessories slow down. The heater or air conditioner fan, lights, windshield wipers, power is drained out of the battery. Now take this same situation with the alternator and the needle shows a charge. Accessories perform strongly and no drain on the battery. That isn't all though. 
The alternator itself lasts about three times longer than a generator. It makes possible a simpler electrical system, needs no cutout relay or current regulator. It is self-regulating, permanently lubricated, and almost completely trouble-free. The owner will appreciate that in a few years. Got something for him to uh, brag about now? Yep. For one thing, easier manual steering. New needle bearings in the steering gear make it possible. And we've eliminated another point of upkeep with a nylon idler arm bushing. Never needs lubrication. I notice with all your chassis features, you put a lot of emphasis on less effort for the driver and lower upkeep costs. That's the idea. The main idea, in fact. Look at this. Full-time power steering. We can't make it any easier to steer because power works for the driver all the time. And to get instant response takes less movement of the wheel than it does on competitive makes. To make steering even more efficient, the 61 Chrysler Power Steering features a self-adjusting pump drive which maintains correct belt tension automatically. Now here's something the reporters probably know all about. Torsion air suspension. Torsion bars up front and leaf springs set far apart in the rear combine to give the car a solid grip on the road. Of course, a lot of credit for ride control goes to AuraFlow shock absorbers. They smooth out the up and down motion of the car when it goes over bumps. For 61, an improved valve design makes AuraFlow quieter than ever in operation. Don't forget how Unibody helps the Chrysler ride too, Harry. I have to admit it, Charlie. No better team than Torsion Air and Unibody. My boys call it the perfect marriage. A tough, solid body that won't bend or flex, squeak or rattle, and the perfect suspension, Torsion Air. And there are many other features that add up to more car for the money for the consumer. Look, for example, at Chrysler's Double Life Aluminized Muffler and Tailpipe. Both inside and out are coated with aluminum to resist corrosion. That's why these parts last up to twice as long as ordinary mufflers and tailpipes. We've got an improved parking brake, too. The longer pedal is easier to reach, and a new linkage system makes setting the brake almost effortless. How about the uh, service brakes, Harry? Charlie, Chrysler has more brake lining per pound of car than any other car in the industry. Not only that, with the Chrysler Total Contact brake design, Every square inch of lining goes into action. You get predictable straight line stops. And Chrysler's bonded brake linings last a lot longer than the riveted type on most other makes. And we've designed all these Chrysler features not only to make the driver safer and more comfortable, but also to give him greater convenience, top performance, and a minimum of service trouble and expense. Look, for example, at Chrysler's push buttons. Darn important to people who buy a big car. They want things easy to operate. What's easier than to push a button? There's Torque Flight, a really wonderful three-speed transmission. Its high breakaway ratio gives you extra fast acceleration. You want to get away in traffic or pull into a fast-moving traffic lane? You can't beat Torque Flight for the job. When you're out on the highway and want to pass, stomp on the accelerator and Torque Flight drops into intermediate you really get an extra surge of power. When you're in slow traffic, push the two button to keep the transmission from shifting back and forth from high to intermediate. Good for rush hours on the expressway. Made to order for it. Now, for that lasting satisfaction we've talked about. This year, we're using a new metal for the kickdown band. It literally soaks up oil, cuts down friction, and eliminates grab during shifts from low to intermediate. Makes torque flight even smoother operating, more trouble-free. Well, that about handles my end of the story. Uh, now how will you sum up your presentation for the reporters, Charlie? I'll make sure the boys remember these points. Unibody's low, stylish exterior. Roomy, comfortable interior. Big entrances, strong, solid, safe construction. Good feature lineup, Charlie. As for me, I'm going to stress Chrysler's top fuel economy and performance, its new kind of electrical power, and its excellent road ability and safe, easy handling. You know something? I think we built a honey of a car. We sure did. Now let's get those reporters in here and show them.
So there you have the engineering sales pitch for Chrysler in 61. Chrysler knew alternators and unibody were the future. Ford and GM would soon follow Chrysler's lead and we are still using the same technology today and it doesn't look like anything will replace them anytime soon. The invention of silicon diodes would facilitate the future dominance of alternators, but it took the industry 10 plus years to get there. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more.